Hey, in this tutorial, we're going to look at using a pre-populated or pre-filled database within our native script Android and iOS application. Uh, so this is actually a continuation, a part two of a tutorial that I already did uh, regarding creating and using a SQLite database in your native script application. This is going to extend upon it. And then let's say, for example, you have the scenario where you want to ship your application with 10,000 rows and 80 tables um, prepackaged when the user downloads your application um, rather than creating them on the fly or who knows what the reason is. Um, you don't want them to download it uh, through some kind of RESTful API or anything like that. So in this case, we're actually going to we're going to construct a SQLite database locally on our computer. We're going to add it to our native script project. And then when we run this project, it's going to automatically use that database if one does not already exist. Uh, so before we go too deep into uh, what we're going to do for this example, let's go ahead and, and do a quick review of what happened in the last tutorial I did. I, I am not going to go in depth like I did in the last video that I made. Uh, so if you want to see SQLite in action in depth, definitely look at my other video. I'm going to add it to the header as well as the comments of this video. Uh, so you'll be able to find it there. So I do have my project already made from the last tutorial. We're going to use that project still. Uh, so inside of that project, we're going to be looking at three different files. We have the main page XML, which is our UI. We have main page.js, which is, I'd like to think of it as our controller but in reality for native script, it's actually our model. And then we have main view model, which uh, is actually our view model uh, for, for native script because native script does the MVVM approach. Uh, so our main view model is gonna have everything that actually uh, queries the database uh, and it's gonna bind it to our UI directly. Uh, the main page uh, controller is responsible for, of course, uh, creating our table and just kind of initializing everything for the particular page that we're on. And then, like I said, the, the XML file is the UI uh, where we can see everything in action on the screen. So that's, that's about as in-depth as I'm going to go. Uh, I'll add to it a little bit as we add the SQLite database that's pre-populated. Uh, but definitely look at the other video that I made if you want to see more on how we made this project uh, as of right now um, in its current state. All right, so the first thing we want to do is I'm going to be using a software called DB Browser for SQLite. It's free. Um, you can download it for pretty much every platform. Um, I will include the link to that application uh, inside of the header. Uh, so that's going to be what I'm using. It's not the only thing that you can use, uh, but it's one of them and it's the one that I'm going to be using. So let's go ahead and open it. I already have it on my desktop. Uh, and you should see something like this, uh, regardless of the platform. Of course, I'm on a Mac, um, but Windows should look pretty similar. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to click Create New Database. And let's go ahead and give that a name. I'm going to save it on my desktop. I'm going to call it, let's call it populated.db. And hit Save. So that'll create a database on your desktop. And now it's going to ask you to create at least one table for that database. So if I recall correctly, I think we called our table people, but let's let's double check. Yes, so our table is expected to be people. So let's go ahead and name it that. And I'm going to add a field. I'm going to say this field is called ID. It's going to be an integer. It's going to be auto increment and primary key. You could also add the, the SQL code in the editor below if you don't want to use the UI. We're going to add another field. This one's going to be first name. It's going to be of type text. And then finally, we have a third field called last name. And it's going to also be of type text. So click OK. All right. So at that point, uh, we can actually save. We're going to save continuously, but let's go ahead and save it. So write changes. 
and now we're going to add some data. So let's go find uh, browse data here. And we're going to say, because this is our table that we just created, we're going to say uh, we want to not touch ID because it's auto increment for us. But let's go ahead and say add Nick Raboy. Let's go ahead and add another record. Let's go ahead and add Maria Raboy. And let's just save it like that for now. So I'm going to write changes again. So now we have a database that has one, uh, hold on. This is actually a filter, sorry. That is not a row. So I have one, one record in there. Let's go ahead and add another one. That was my mistake. Oops, I keep accidentally double clicking it. So let's say Nick, or a boy. Now I can save it. So as you can see, I, I had entered it into the filter by mistake. So we have one table, one database, and two rows in that table. And I've saved it. I've chosen to write the changes. So at this point, we can close uh, the application out. We have our database. It has data. So going back into the code, let me go first run the application how it was before we add this database to it. So I already have it installed on my simulator. This is a Jenny Motion simulator. It's called SQLite Project. I'm going to open up my logs. And I'm going to hit Select. So right now, there's no data in the database right now. So if I add, let's say, um, Brad Martin, Insert. It inserted it, and now I selected it, and of course the data shows up. It's not necessarily clean, but that cleaning up our data uh, wasn't necessarily the scope of this project. It was more showing how to get the data in and how to get the data out. So I've added it. Uh, you can see there's there's no pre-populated database in this scenario. So let me go ahead and clear the settings to this application, clear the data. Now we're going to install our database. Let me stop running my log cap and I'll clear it. So what we want to do is we want to take this populated database file. So let's copy it. And let's enter our SQLite project and then our app directory. Oh, one too far. So I'm going to paste it in. So our populated DB exists alongside our code inside of the app directory of our project. All right, so now that that file is in there, we need to add some code to make it work. So go to our controller, because this is where we're going to do all of our initialization. Uh, what we're going to do right after the page line, line 5, we're going to add some code here. We're going to say if not SQLite.exists populated.db, so the database that we just created. So what, what we're saying here is if this database does not exist, let's go ahead and copy it over from within our application uh, into a protected space within the device. So it, dif it differs for Android and iOS, uh, but it's not something you need to worry about. So we're going to say SQLite.copy database populated.db. All right, so right now it just copied it if it did not exist. Let's go a step further here. Uh, let's make sure our naming conventions are the same. So we're going to say populated.db. So the reason for why I'm still leaving this code here is what if maybe we don't add a pre-populated database? Let's still, we want to create a new table uh, and proceed as normal. Uh, remember, because this line right here, line 9, uh, will create or open. So it, it doesn't necessarily... Uh, create a new table every time and wipe all your data. Uh, this will open the database or create it. This line right here, line 10, of course, will only create a table if it does not exist. If we copied our database over, it will exist. Uh, but in both scenarios, regardless if it exists or does not exist, it will still reach line 11. It will only cause an error if there was truly an error. So you'll still make it to line 11. So let's save what we have. And we're going to run it again. So let's go into our terminal. I'm going to say 
TNS run Android. Perfect. Uh, so these are actually old logs uh, from the last time I ran my application. Uh, so let me let me see about clearing it all together. You know, just ignore it for now because these are old logs. Trust me when I say that they're old. So what we want to do is now I'm going to say select, um, and it selected the two results that were in the pre-populated database. So I can keep keep selecting them. It, that's all that exists. So remember, uh, this Brad Martin and, and Nick Raboy one, uh, those are old records. Um, our native script um, logging engine just didn't clear it. But now let's go ahead and add a new record. Let's say uh, we want to add, uh, let's go ahead and add uh, Gen Looper. Insert, select, and now, of course, um, she has been added to the already two existing uh, records from the pre-populated database. And when I open this application again, uh, it will not recreate this database. Our database has been created and will only be recreated in the event that we clear our data for the application. So you just saw how to use a pre-populated database. It's convenient for, for certain scenarios. Um, it's up to you. So um, I do recommend that you view my other video. It will have useful information on a lot of the stuff that I did for building uh, the first iteration of this application. Um, and there's also a write-up as well that goes with it.